Today we are bringing you a video all about gardening. One of the most important things if you ask Aaron and I, if everybody grew their own garden, ate their own fresh veggies from their own yard, we would save on electricity, we would save on water, the planet would start to breathe again. Oh man, it's time, we need to put this video out there. On this beautifully rainy day, it's a perfect time for me to sit down and talk about gardening. So. First things first, how to start and grow a successful garden. You can do this in a few very basic, very simple DIY steps, and I'm gonna break those down now. So tip number one, find the right amount of space in the right place for your garden. I recommend doing it in a place, number one, that you can see from inside your house, number two, in a space that is big enough to hold the garden, right? Even if you're not putting a super big garden in, you want to have enough space to be able to reach the plants, the vegetables, maybe even walk between some of your rows. Why do you want to see it from the house? Well, number one, you want to be able to see it if pests are getting into it. Number two, you want to be reminded to water the garden. It gets really easy to forget that you need to water the garden, especially in summer when we don't get these perfect, beautiful spring rainy days. You want to be reminded. And if you look out your window and you can see the garden, you'll be reminded. Sight it right. Find the right place for your garden. Okay, tip number two. Plant it in the sun, okay? So some people might forget this. They might plant their gardens under a tree or in a nice shady spot of the yard. That seems nice but most vegetables, herbs, and all of these things that we're gonna be eating need at least six hours of sun a day in order to grow well. I would recommend kind of gauging the sun throughout the day before you pick the right place and space for your garden, just to see, just to make sure, you're, again, that you're getting at least six hours of sunlight. It's super important. Sunlight is food for our plants. Number three, stay within reach of water. So out at Aaron's grandparents' house where I planted the beds for Gramps. We didn't have a hose spigot out there and it was almost impossible for me to carry buckets of water out there, but there's no way that Gramps was gonna be carrying five gallon buckets of water. So what we actually did was we ran a hose spigot out there and popped one up, but that's not something that everybody is gonna to want to do. So I would recommend putting your garden in a place that is accessible to water. It's nice to have a hose that you can just grab and hook up, sprinkle your garden, water it up real nice, hang it back up and go on the house. If you're having to lug water, jugs, buckets, or whatever, it's gonna be a pain in your back for sure. So stay close to water. Tip number four, what I think is probably the most important soil composition. So consider the soil that you're planting your garden bed into. In my opinion, you're gonna to wanna to build a raised garden bed so you can implement whatever kind of soil and nutrients and supplements basically for your soil that you want. So this includes a number of things that I'll talk about a little bit here. This is 50% compost, 50% topsoil. I've also put in some coconut coir. You can also use peat moss. Now peat moss is very similar to coconut coir. It comes in these big bundles. It's really lightweight stuff. It's gonna add some, some air, some fluffiness to your soil. You can also add sand. This is basically just gonna be really nitrogen rich, really mineral rich for your soil. Again, it's gonna be food for your vegetables. So if you look up close, you can see some really dark soil. That's gonna be the worm castings. You see a little bit lighter soil. That's gonna be our compost and topsoil. And then you see this light brown stuff. In fact, here's a chunk of that coconut coir and you can see it kind of burst open and break open. It expands like crazy when you get it wet. It turns a little bit darker like this stuff here, but it expands and it holds a whole bunch of water and that's what you want. You want something that's gonna hold on to that moisture within the soil, especially when it gets to be, you know, 85, 90 degrees in the summer, you want something to hold that moisture in. Soil composition is so important. If you have bad soil, you get bad growing, bad tasting vegetables, nutrient void vegetables, they get everything 
from the soil. So you want good soil in order to get good vegetables. We have experimented with putting mulch in between our garden to keep the soil a little bit more moist. Again, it also kind of deters squirrels and things because it's not super easy to dig in mulch. Also, if it's gonna be super, super hot, like it does get for us in like August and September, that mulch will help to keep that soil moist. So we put mulch on top to help with moisture levels of the soil. And now it stays super good and dark and yeah. black. Golden. Tip number five. Think about containers. Okay, so I just mentioned using a raised garden bed model. Now this is technically a container. It's a huge one, but it's definitely a container. If you live, say, in an apartment somewhere and you don't have any yard, you can actually pl plant your vegetables in pots or wide containers, set them in the window, and have your garden there. If you have the space, I would definitely recommend a raised garden bed or even some pots outside. There are six of these garden beds. These are eight foot long and four foot wide. They're about 20 inches high. I think that's plenty high for, for Gramps to be able to bend over. They hit right at about my knee. Depending on your budget, you may not want to build them super big or super tall. The taller you build them, the more expensive the lumber gets, the more soil you have to add in. Again, if you're building an above ground raised garden bed like I recommend you do, I would suggest building it four by eight foot. Dimensional size lumber is gonna start at eight foot. So if you build your bed eight foot by four foot, you buy all eight foot lumber and you only have to cut the four foot sections one time. So it saves you time, it also saves you money. So I would suggest building a bed that's four foot by eight foot. So if you can't tell, a DIY is like my thing. I've been like a DIY master since day one. And a lot of people ask, how did you learn how to do this? How did you learn how to be handy? I would recommend something that we've recommended before and that is checking out a site like Skillshare. If you wanna be like Napoleon Dynamite and you need more skills, definitely check out Skillshare. It's less than $10 a month. They have a plethora of courses on how to do just about any and everything. Whether you're editing photos, editing video, planting a garden, or building something, Skillshare is gonna have a course for you. So thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. They have agreed to give the first thousand people to click the link in our description below a two month free trial. Highly, highly recommend Skillshare. Okay, tip number six. You're going to want to pick your vegetables wisely. So you're gonna to wanna to do your homework. You're gonna to wanna to evaluate the amount of space that you have and you're gonna to want to pick your plants wisely. Also, if you live in a climate like ours, you're gonna want some super hardy plants. So your leafy greens like kale and some other frost resistant plants are gonna be what you want to plant. Here is what we've got. Lacinato kale, we grew this last year and we had so much, we didn't know what to do with it. Love it. Dwarf blue curled scotch kale. I just call it curly kale. Spinach. Last year I actually started it way too late so we didn't really get any harvest of that, but we're gonna do spinach. Lettuce, gotta love it. Pretty versatile, amazing. And arugula. I always like to put a little bit of that in my salads just because I like the spiciness. Heirloom tomatoes. Oh my gosh. One of the best things about summertime. So now that you guys have your beds built, your soil, in the beds it's time to plant now this is something that Erin has actually done very well in the past she enjoys planting it's a relatively quick and easy job but it's so rewarding again because you get to put your hands in the soil this is an ancient ancient practice right planting seeds watching them grow so if you guys are gonna plant seeds, we recommend doing so as soon as possible. Where we are, again, it freezes in the winter and you don't wanna plant unless if it's still gonna freeze because you're obviously gonna kill your little sprouts. Now some things are like able to deal with the frost, like some kales you can plant earlier, but again, you'll have to hop online and search the planting zone um, that you're in and see what time and how early you can start your seeds. So. Planting seeds is super simple. You kind of just cut a trail with your hand and you drop those bad boys in. 
Now I recommend spacing these at least six inches apart, if not like a foot or two. Depending on the space, I would always recommend having more space between because it's just gonna make it easier to you know pluck weeds and get in there and just keep your, your garden nice and manicured. So the more space, the better. But if you're working with less space, I would say still do at least six inches. That's gonna give you enough space, again, to get in there. Your garden's not gonna get overgrown. They're gonna grow up bigger than you think. We would also recommend planting certain herbs in your vegetable garden, okay? When we were in Costa Rica, we learned so much. Actually, they have an epic, epic garden. It's actually more of a greenhouse. We learned so much about what to plant by what. So herbs are actually gonna keep these worms and these grubs and these things that are gonna eat your veggies, the herbs actually keep them away. So if you plant certain things by certain, certain herbs by certain vegetables, again, you will have no pests, no bugs, and it seems like God's gift to us, like nature's gift, right? That we just need to know, we just need the knowledge to know what to plant by what. So if you want your food faster, right? You want your garden growing and full of green leafies, tomatoes, cucumbers, whatever it is you're planting and you want them now, then I would recommend buying seed starts, okay? So if you buy the starts, these are gonna be you know, organic, obviously, I would buy organic seed starts. These are gonna be grown in greenhouses like through the winter, okay? Or at least starting in late winter so that you can pick them up and they're already like full-size plants. Again, I'll insert some clips here so you guys can see about the sizes of the starts that we have. We have got some kale that needs planting. I just picked it up from the farmer's market. So these are actually seed starts that we purchased from our farmer's market. It just gives you a couple weeks extra head start so we can eat homegrown, homemade salads and fresh meals sooner. So I highly recommend doing it this way as opposed to planting seeds if you can find organic seed starts grown in a greenhouse because they just are able to grow them a little bit earlier. In the summertime, there's nothing like fresh, homegrown cherry tomatoes. We eat these things by the handful like they're berries. <laughs> <laughs> Look up a local nursery or greenhouse near you and see if you can't find your seed starts. Now we actually buy some of ours from our co-op, which is also a grocery store. Again, everything's organic and grown locally. Also look into your local farmer's markets. A lot of the farmers that, that come to your local farmer's markets will offer seed starts. And before they're selling fruit, they're probably gonna be selling those starts at the market. Now, we obviously recommend doing everything organic. That means buying organic seeds. Some people think that any seed is okay as long as you don't put pesticides on the plant. That's not true. A lot of the non-organic seeds have been genetically modified or they come from genetically modified plants. That's not what you want. We don't want GMO foods. We want all organic, especially if we're growing it ourselves. So definitely buy organic seeds. Again, I would recommend checking out your local co-op, your local farmer's market, and or worst case, you can buy organic seeds on Amazon. Aaron is our master planter. And what we recommend are a number of different things. Number one, you can sprout your own seeds. Now you can sprout them and then plant them in the garden, or you can simply sprout them to eat, like Aaron is actually gonna talk a little bit about now. I'm gonna show you guys how quick and simple it is to sprout your own greens on your own in your kitchen. Sprouting nuts and seeds helps to break down anti-nutrients, enzyme inhibitors, and lectins. And once those are taken care of, it unlocks all of the nutrient potential in the nuts and seeds. The soaking process simulates the seed going into the soil and being rained on where it is then able to unlock its nutrients and its growth potential and become a sprout or a microgreen. So these are one of the most inexpensive superfoods, if you wanna call it that, that you can purchase and make on your own at home to bump up the nutrient contents of salads. You can throw them in smoothies, top them on any kind of dish to beautify them and just make them more nutrient dense. Here are a few examples of different seeds that you can purchase. These are broccoli seeds, these are wheatgrass seeds, and then these are alfalfa seeds. You're gonna take your broccoli seeds and you'll measure out two tablespoons 
and then you're gonna want to completely submerge them to let them soak in filtered water. For broccoli seeds, it takes about six to eight hours. So two to three times a day, you'll wanna take and either mist or rinse your seeds just to keep them hydrated and from growing any type of bacteria. They'll cover them back up and then once they've taken root, you can uncover them, give them a little sunlight exposure, and you'll notice they'll start to turn a darker green, and that is when they are getting full of that sunlight nutrition. This is something else I got on Amazon. This isn't any kind of endorsement or anything like that. I just really like the product. It's called the Sprout Master. I will link it below, and they're just these mini little sprouting containers, and you can see here, these are some broccoli seeds that I just started yesterday and you can see they're growing little tails already already and they will start to take root and then they will sprout up a few days later this is what beautiful gorgeousness you will be left with depending on how long you let your seeds or sprouts grow they become microgreens eventually and you can clip them at the root or you can pluck them and eat the entire thing either way microgreens are fantastic sources of nutrients, phytonutrients, vitamins, minerals. They are seriously like tiny baby powerhouses of nutrition. So these are great to top your salads with. They kind of make a pretty little garnish on all kinds of dishes and they taste amazing. Tip number seven, harvesting. This is what it's all about. This is why we planted a garden in the first place so that we can pick and eat these amazing fruits and vegetables, whatever it is you happen to be growing. Now, Aaron and I made the mistake the first year of kind of letting our garden go crazy. I'm like, just let it grow. It's doing so well. And before you know it, our asparagus was like two and a half feet tall and tasted like crap. That first year we had this massive arugula that was sprouting flowers and all kinds of stuff. We didn't harvest it soon enough. So when you're harvesting your vegetables, be mindful, only take what you want or need for that meal or for that day. Clip them nice and neat. Don't pluck them, don't pull them. And again, think about when things taste right, when they look right. Think about the cherry tomatoes and when they're coming off. It's also thinking about how is what's gonna be best for this plant to continue to thrive. You know, if, if I strip every single leaf off of this kale plant, you know, it's not gonna do very well. In fact, it might die. So. Consider how you harvest, when you harvest, and enjoy. If you guys like this video or found it helpful, please give it a thumbs up. Follow us on all forms of social media. We're always posting to our stories, posting pictures of Max, recipes, workouts, all kinds of stuff daily on Instagram. So again, don't forget to follow us on Instagram at dbstanzik and Aaron at Aaron Stanzik. One of the most important things you guys can do is share this video. It helps Aaron and I get our message out there to everyone. Until next time, eat, move, rest, your best. Peace. We're Dusty, Aaron, Max, and Bo, and we're the Stanzix. We aspire to live a plant-centric, faith-forward, healthy lifestyle and welcome all of the adventures that accompany it. Join us every week as we blend, chop, juice, run, lift, ride, and master our minds in between on the ultimate quest to find better balance, deeper connection, and true happiness within.